admitted in court that they were not going to have a census question, that it was, you know, part of uh, the effort to suppress voting. This administration seems interested in suppressing voting in any jurisdiction where there's a substantial non-white uh, population. It's the opposite of what they should be doing. Governor Bill Wall gets tonight's last word. Thank you, Governor. The 11th Hour with Brian Williams starts now. Tonight, it's a scene from a blockbuster movie, not a July 4th celebration on the National Mall. Tanks descend on the U.S. Capitol ahead of Donald Trump's spectacle at the Lincoln Memorial. Meanwhile, these are the pictures migrant children have drawn of their time in detention centers. And based on his Twitter feed, the president sees the conditions they face as a deterrent to those who might follow them into the United States. And an about face on the census after a Supreme Court ruling saying the feds didn't have a good enough reason to include a census citizenship question, Trump orders the DOJ to get it back in. Neil Katyal helps us make sense of it as the 11th hour gets underway on a Wednesday night. Good evening once again from our NBC News headquarters here in New York. I'm Ali Velshi in for Brian Williams. Day 895 of the Trump administration, there could not be a more stark split screen on the eve of the nation's 243rd birthday. On the left, preparations for Trump's July 4th salute to America are underway on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. A celebration featuring tanks, military flyovers, and a speech from the commander-in-chief taking place as his administration is in the throes of a full-blown humanitarian crisis on the right of your screen on the nation's southern border. The president has promised, quote, our July 4th salute to America at the Lincoln Memorial is looking to be really big. It will be the show of a lifetime. The cost of our great salute to America tomorrow will be very little compared to what it's worth. We own the planes. We have the pilots. The airport is right next door, Andrews. All we need is the fuel. We own the tanks and all. Fireworks are donated by two of the greats. Nice! Democrats in Washington and the campaign trail have cr criticized the plan president's plans. Just a short time ago, the deputy White House press secretary had this response. Now look, it's pretty clear at this point that the Democrats in this country hate this president more than they love America. Uh, I was with the president for quite some time this afternoon talking about the speech, listening to him uh, uh, talk about the themes that he wants to, to address. And there's not a, a political uh, bone in the entire speech. NBC News has learned there is concern among some top military officials that tomorrow's event could put the armed forces in a position to be used politically, even though Pentagon lawyers gave the okay for participation and attendance. The New York Times also quotes, uh, reports, quote, some retired and active duty military officers and privately, even some Defense Department personnel said the participation of the military in President Trump's salute to America appears to politicize the armed forces on a day when the nation traditionally toasts its independence in a nonpartisan environment. Earlier on this network, the mayor of Washington, D.C. expressed her apprehensions about tomorrow night. This has been a nonpartisan, fun family event where people come from all walks of life, from all points of this region uh, in the world uh, to celebrate uh, the fireworks. So we, we, we hope that the president will stick to that uh, and not turn it into that. Uh, and we hope, too, that we never see the spectacle of our military uh, force being on display um, as a show of force to our own people. Now, political reports there's concern among White House aides about their ability to pull off what Trump expects to see. Reporter Nancy Cook, who joins me in a moment, writes, quote, White House and the Republican National Committee have spent the last weeks 